Hello and a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Gugule Tutele. In studio with me, I'm joined by Sean Ashton and Liam Hechter, both from Anchor Capital. Now, today we're talking Investec, a specialist bank and asset manager providing a range of financial products and services to a client base in three markets, including the United Kingdom and Europe and South Africa, and not forgetting Asia slash Australia. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. When I think Investec, immediately Stephen Kossoff comes to mind with his stance uh, on a lot of the global factors and banking environment, but the geographical spread of this company and the different parts in which they have their fingers in, uh, is this working for them strategically? So I think it's quite a unique mix of businesses that they've got and you've got to break it out not only geographically but also in terms of business lines. So this is what we call specialist bank which is quite a cap capital heavy business where the returns have historically been quite poor coming through the financial crisis. And certainly as they're working out a lot of the legacy business that they've written in the UK, we're seeing a rising return profile in the UK specifically. So that seems to be working quite nicely. They're up to about a 15% return on equity in their specialist bank. Uh, and then I think quite encouragingly, when, when one looks at the, the global asset management business that they've built largely organically, they're getting very, very attractive flows. I think in this last reporting period, though, we were once again highlighted the impact of currencies. Mm. So they actually report in, in, in British pounds. Um, but yeah, when, you, when you look at it in, in UK pounds, despite the fact that they were up on many operational metrics in, in underlying currencies being largely the rand for roughly half of their business, that obviously diluted them down once, uh, once they came back to reporting currency. Mm -hmm. If we do take a look at some of the metrics though regarding forward PEs as well as uh, the multiples mm -hmm. and how they compare to their peers, how do they fare? Okay, so yeah. Investec trades on about a 10 times um, our estimate uh, of forward earnings. So um, in terms of the rest of the, if you're going to compare it to South African banks, you, you'd probably say that it would be a little bit more uh, expensive relative. However, the business has to be broken down because it is an asset manager, a wealth manager, and a bank that operates pr primarily in South Africa and the United Kingdom. So when we look at Investec, we break it down into six different businesses and then also add a seventh element which is the group head office cost structure. So very difficult to compare Investec to the traditional big four banks in South Africa um, but on a sum of the parts basis the way we value it we, um, we, current, we feel that at the moment uh, according to our estimates we are, we are paying below book value for the specialist bank and we believe that that is currently possibly unjustified at the moment. Mm -hmm. When it does come to the segmental performance though, where are we seeing areas of weakness and then maybe work our way onto uh, markets that they're seeing growth in? I think in terms of uh, weakness, uh, I, it's difficult to say that the specialist bank is performing weakly. I think um, at the moment they're busy still, as Sean mentioned, working out legacy issues. Um, the underlying operational metrics of the specialist bank in both the UK and South Africa are performing quite well. So we, we're happy with the progress that management have made. Um, in working out the, the problems that they faced during the global financial crisis. And uh, operationally, the metrics are pointing in the right direction in terms of expanding the ROE, working out past impairments, and um, also, quite encouragingly, their book growth on a constant currency basis was, was strong in the last set of results. So mm -hmm. in terms of the cost to income ratio, that, that is trending downwards, which should point to a return on equity trending upwards, and that's what we, we look for when we look at investing. You say UK, and first thing that comes to mind is the potential Brexit vote coming up uh, end of June. Mm. How would that impact on the company's operations? So Should I think, uh, and that's way? something that they're quite clearly concerned about. Stephen mentioned it in his uh, presentation. He's hopeful that we can get past this vote with a, with a good outcome. I think for, for any banking operation in the United Kingdom, it's not good news if the UK decides to leave the, 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 the Eurozone ultimately, uh, because, you know, Banks operations would have to be domiciled, they'd have to have more operations domiciled in the countries countries in which they're doing trade flows, etc. So for example, you'd have to have people leaving banks in, in London, in the city of London and going back to centres like Frankfurt. A lot of global banks that operate in London would have to move a lot of their operations uh, potentially outside outside of London. So yeah, depending on how you're positioned in that, you could be on the back foot. And I think there's the, the, there's very few global banks that have their headquarters or, or their major operations in London that are saying that this is a good thing. Mm. I think overwhelmingly the, the, the sentiment seems to be that it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. and, and in addition to that, I think it places a, a bit of a premium uh, or a discount uh, on UK-based assets. So in terms of cost of uh, capital, you would probably see as an uptick in the cost of capital in the UK, which for Investec specifically would be negative. Mm. 
Let's come back to the currency concerns here again. Uh, uh, is this one of those concerns that might still remain over the next 6 to 12 uh, and even 18 months, especially given the wide geographic locations that they're situated in? It, it depends on, on from which perspective you're viewing it. So if you're a South African shareholder, you'll point to the fact that earnings are up circa 20%, I think the number was, but in pounds you, you significantly dilute it. So if you're, if you're a foreign shareholder, you might be looking at Investec saying that, okay, I'm buying something in pounds, but half of the business is domiciled in South Africa and I'm really worried about the currency. Whereas if you're a South African investor and you can invest in other banks which have predominantly local operations, you might say, well, here's Investec which is dealing with a fairly high-end client base. A lot of it is quite capitalized earnings, but importantly, 50 or 40 to 50 percent of the profits are hard currency earnings. So if I'm domiciled in RANDs, that's going to be a good thing for me. Mm. So I think from a, from a RAND perspective, from the perspective of a RAND shareholder, um, I would say that there's an element of, of hedge in, in this business for you. Mm -hmm. Keeping with the South African theme though, should we still be concerned about our own local uh, concerns, sluggish economic growth, the ratings agency's outlook? Absolutely, I think, I think it is cause for concern. I think that the client base that they, that they tend to deal with are a much higher end client base when you're looking at the private bank. Uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, out, look outside of that corporate investment banking naturally can be uh, impacted negatively by, uh, by a slowdown in the economy that's got not good news. Um, and even top end clients might find that if they've lost confidence in what's happening in, in, in the country generally they might not be inclined to do big lending deals etc. So I think, I think for overall activity levels it is of concern uh, but I think from an impairment point of view um, you're probably dealing with a bank that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that might be of, of less risk compared to something like a traditional retail bank where your mid to lower tier customers might take more pain through, the, through retrenchments and uh, job losses, etc. If we do take a look at the share price though, year to date it has come under slight pressure, mm. sitting on a PE of about 13. Why am I buying this if I'm an interested investor? Is it for the divvy? Is it for future growth? Is it because of their strategy going forward? What works for them? I think uh, if I could jump in there, I would say that buying it today, you're probably buying it at an estimate or our estimate uh, of about 25% discount to what we would consider its fair value. So outside of that, um, you know, this is, a, this is just a good story um, in terms of a fundamental bottom up stock pick. It's not, nece not necessarily a sector that we're trying to jump or rush into at the moment. Um, in terms of banks in South Africa, so it's not it's not exactly a, an attractive sector for us, but we believe that the margin of safety in the valuation justifies us owning it and being at least um, overweighted in, in um, portfolios versus the benchmark. Yeah. How does this tie into the re-rating? I understand um, we have a, a slide on that as well. So I think the argument would be that as the return on equity profile continues to improve in the core bank, um, it's it's you know, if you're placing a fair valuation, and that should be reflected in overall EPS growth. But if you're placing what we would deem to be a fair valuation on things like asset management and wealth, which are, I would argue, a lot cleaner, easier to understand businesses that generate a lot of cash. So they would, they would attract a premium rating. I think we're valuing them at kind of between 13 and 14 and a half to 15 PEs for those two units. Um, you land up with a very low implied valuation on the bank, which is which what we're saying is given the return profile and the improvement in the return profile, the market should increasingly attribute a higher multiple to to the book value that's uh, that's embedded in that business. And currently, as we say, it's trading at about you know, the way we would look at it, roughly a 30 percent discount to book value for a return on equity that you know, when you strip through all the legacy issues is actually above their cost of capital. Mm -hmm. If we do, however, compare it with some of its global counterparts as well as banks that might mm -hmm. have uh, 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 operations rather in uh, some of the geographic locations that mm -hmm. they operate in, how does Investec stand out and what makes it a firm favorite? So, so I, think, uh, I think they're fairly niche in the types of, uh, you know, away from just the core kind of private banking business that they do in the UK, um, a lot of the corporate lending deals that they tend to do tend to be more niche deals which might not be chased by the much larger banks because it's, uh, you know, it might not be worth their while given their size. And that tends to afford them a bit of a better return profile. If you look at a lot of the kind of integrated wealth and, and asset manager slash banks around the world, UBS is another example, you know, they're really struggling to get to kind of a 13% return on equity in time. They're not there yet. And mm. most banks, uh, many banks are not even at double digits. So I think generally speaking, banking in the developed world um, has become quite a low return business. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sidestep for a moment and uh, perhaps uh, bring up a topic that maybe some investors might be thinking about, but with Barclays uh, PLC divesting from the operat African operations, mm -hmm. does this not present an opportunity for Investec maybe to uh, uh, expand on its EM exposure or would that not necessarily I'm work I'm not sure well that's part it? of their strategy and I think it would be, 
um, a hell of a thing for them to swallow in terms of size. So, but but yeah, I'd be quite surprised if there was going to be a tie-up between Investec and, and the African. Would that dilute mm, that yeah. private banking experience yeah, I and think exposure? So. I mean, uh, what, what would you say, Liam? Yeah, I would mm. agree, agree with you. I don't think uh, the management team of Investec would be looking to increase exposure into risky frontier markets right now. I don't. You know, I think that they would probably be focusing on just the continued. Um, work through of the legacy assets in the UK and mm -hmm. expanding the RAE through that bank and I think at the moment they're doing a fantastic job and um, I hope in six months time we can come back and, and sit here and have the same conversation and say they've continued along the improvement that we've been expecting. Mm -hmm. Well let's hope so and uh, find out now from our experts whether to buy, hold or sell investing. <music> Liam let's start with you, buy, hold or sell investing. At the moment, once again, as I said, uh, the SA banking sector, which is probably only makes up about one sixth of the value of Investec, is not exactly a sector that we're rushing into at the moment. Um, however, the margin of safety and the valuation of the business as a whole, which we feel is, is actually quite conservative in the, our approach to valuing it, would suggest that there's a lot of upside from the current levels and uh, we'll be buying the share. Sure. So for me, it's a buy. I think the environment's tough. I think uh, there's a, there are cheaper alternatives out there. It's not the cheapest bank. And we do own some of the cheapest banks like Nedbank and, and Barclays. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some exposure there. But I would say within the context of, of the overall industry, you know, this business does deserve a premium for its mix of earnings. Uh, we have been arguing for a while that it's undervalued. Um, it, not all of that undervaluation has been removed. So we, we, we still believe there's upside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to steal uh, an extra 30 seconds though, what about the US operations? Could that also um, see some kind of uh, uh, movements taking place given the uh, positioning of the Fed and talk around uh, interest rates going forward? So I think the US operations in their life are perhaps an office that uh, is quite small. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have got a distribution <laughs> network there for the asset management yeah. business and it actually performed pretty well in the last mm. set of numbers. So. Uh, I don't think, uh, well, I mean, it's not really a material in, in terms of our thesis on, on, on investing. Yeah. Okay, at least we've gotten that <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, giving yeah. us a buy recommendation. There it is for Investec. A big thank you once more to both Sean Ashton and Liam Hechter, both from Anchor Capital. Join us again next time where we talk more stocks.